Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm going to show you the lobby setup of Pernet. Now I've been working on an abstracted lobby setup which should work with a lot of providers. For now, and in my case, I'm just going to be using Steam because that's the one that I've been working on setting up. But you could set it up with Epic Games, Unity Lobbies, your own database or something completely different. That's the whole beauty of an abstracted setup like that. So let me go ahead and show you. Now in my project here, I have nothing but Pernet set up. It's the only thing that I have in the project. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to go to Tools, Pernet, and open the add-on library. This is a feature of Pernet, which uh, essentially will hold a library of all our add-ons. Now, in this case, we only have one. Um, and so I'm just going to go ahead and hit install on the Pernet lobby here. So I'm going to hit install. It's going to show us everything that it's going to import. And I'm just going to hit import. And here we go. Now, with this imported, let's go ahead and show you, first of all, how it works. So I have Steam open already, which you can see here. And this is my Steam chat with just my testing account, which is called Konkidong. And if I just go into the lobby scenes and I'm going to open the lobby sample, for example, you can see here uh, there's a few things missing, first of all, which is because we don't have Text Mesh Pro in the project. So one easy way to do that is this window will just open up. You're just going to hit import TMP essentials. And now we have Text Mesh Pro in the project. So now when I reload it, you can see now things should look right. And if I go ahead and I run the scene, you can see we end up in here in the lobby. Now, bear in mind that Steam isn't initialized yet because we don't have Steam in the project, there's no provider and so on. So I'm gonna show you the first initial setup. So first thing you wanna go ahead and do is in our build profiles and open the scene list, we essentially want both of these scenes in here. And I can also just remove the sample scene because I don't need that, but it doesn't really matter. But essentially we just need the, the lobby scene or whatever scene you want to be first, it could be zero. Uh, for when you build your project but regardless the lobby scene and the network scene need to be in here because those are the ones that we use for the initial setup now of course again you can change anything that you want during the setup and you're more than welcome to modify it as well it is mit licensed so go nuts now there's a few things here uh, first things first is we need steamworks.net in order to work with the steam provider so the setup already comes with the steam lobby provider in here but essentially you can make your own providers or whatever you want. But I'm gonna click this add steamworks.net to package manager button and I'm just gonna wait a little bit. Unity is gonna be loading in the Steamworks package. And now that this is successfully loaded, you can see these have now unfolded or at least the Steam lobby provider has. You can see that's a handle Steam initializing. This, if you have another Steam setup already like Steamworks Heathens, for example, I would just keep this off, which is why it's off by default. But in case that you do want the lobby setup to be handling the Steam initialization, you can just toggle this one to true and it should initialize with our Steam account. Now also bear in mind that if we go into the assets folder, you can see this is the assets folder. There's the Steam app ID TXT that's been added to your project and that will just by default have the 480. This is the Steam testing ID, but if you have your own app ID, this is where you want to change that. So now if I just go ahead and hit play, you can see that it now says Steamworks initialized successfully which also now means that we can, for example, go ahead and create a lobby. We can browse for lobbies and so on. We can join with the code. Now, let me go ahead and show you how everything looks just testing uh, solo here. So if I, for example, hit create a lobby and I go with my mouse over the inspector, now you can see a few things out here have unfolded. First of all, let's just look at the Steam Lobby Provider. That's just a custom inspector I've made down here, which says the Steam Lobby Provider is initialized and running. And also you can see we're in a lobby. Yes, this is our lobby ID and how many players are in the lobby. You can also see the lobby room status directly from the lobby manager. Now this will work with any abstractive setup, no matter what provider you use, you'll be able to see this information like your room ID, the max players, and then a list of the room properties, which you can see the name. For example, this is called Bobsy's Lobby. And there is a filter on, which is per net is the best. And then whether the game has started or not, which is false. And then you can also see the members. You can get an overview of the members and so on. I'm pretty happy with this setup. I think it's very uh, easy to use. And you can also see now if I go ahead and hit ready, it'll move us onto the network connected scene. And then it'll let us know once we've successfully connected, which, you know, we can also see on the network manager. And here you can see that we are indeed started as both the server and the client in this case. And I can also just return back. And we've now gone in essentially a full loop. So now let me go and show you a bit more about how this works a little bit more in depth. But another thing I also want to do is I just want to push this to my temporary Git project here that I've just made in order to test with my other computer. Because in order to test with Steam, you unfortunately need two computers or a virtual machine set up. But regardless, it needs to be in two systems. Uh, it's, in my opinion, a kink of Steam. Um, but it is what it is. So let's just do testing setup. And I'm going to push this. So here we go. Now my other computer got this pulled correctly and started the scene. As you can see, they also entered the game of Space War, which is the testing ID. Now first things first, for example, I can go in to create a lobby and I can now see him in my friends list. The Steam pictures can take a little bit to pull and he will get an update. I have now invited him. He can click play game and then he should be joining the lobby. There you go. So now we can see him in the lobby too. He can click ready. You can see his text turn screen. We can click ready our text turn screen. 
And with both parties already, it'll go into the next scene and it'll connect. And now both are saying connected. And I can now also return back out. You can return back out and we're both back in the loop. Now let's try and do it the other way. So you can also see that. So he'll create a room. He'll invite us. We can go and hit play game and you can see we end up in the lobby. Now we can also try and join by, for example, the lobby browser. So you can see we find Kongi Dong's lobby here. And I can click that and I'm back in. And we can also join by the code if I'm just going to have him send us the code. Go, copy it with the button. I can just copy it, put the code in here, hit join, and there we go. And now we're in the room. And you can see how this works in all sorts of ways. Now let me show you some of the different things. For example, the, the code here is what you used to join with. If you click it, it'll say copied. Um, and also let me show you some of the things that you can easily customize or that's easily accessible for you to customize. So going into our canvas, this is where all our views are. And I'll go over the view management in a little bit. Going into the lobby screen and you can see we have the invite bar here, which holds the friend list. That is essentially what you see over here. We can actually change what we're filtering. This has to be in this game right now, which is why we're only seeing Konki Dong. We can also filter for online, in which case you can see some of my other friends here in the list. And we can also filter for all, in which case it'll also find all of my inactive friends. And then I can go back to only in this game. Now again, there are definitely more things that can be done necessarily better. I just made the, the Steam integration here. And I've just made a very basic UI setup, obviously. Um, but most things really work well. And let me show you a little bit more about how the whole, for example, the lobby searching and so on works. So I'm just going to go ahead here and just leave on both. And let's head into the lobby manager. So you can see there are some create room arguments, which is why where I set the max amount of players. And also some of the room properties, which is what I also use for searching. And you can see in this case, I, by default, we just have per net is the best. The reason why there is room properties by default and it's not just nothing. And I can actually, I guess, just show you this. So you can see that the room properties here where we have per net is the best. Now, these can also just be zero, but because we're on the 480 ID, which I showed you earlier, uh, that means that we would find a whole bunch of rooms, which isn't relevant for us. So in this case, we need some kind of search parameters uh, and they just have to align. So essentially the create room parameters and the search parameters, they just have to align and we'll only find rooms that are relevant to us, which is why I've just set it up like this by default. You can, of course, make it whatever you want. You can use this for custom room codes or whatever, uh, and so on. You can, you can do a lot with this. Um, now, the next thing in the lobby manager is all the events. There's a bunch of events here, and you can see my setup already utilizes a bunch of them. But essentially, it's just things that you can easily tap into. You can do this through code as well. But it's just events that you can easily tap into. You know, for example, when the, when the room is left, we want to go back to the main menu. When the room is joined, we want to go into the the lobby view and so on and so forth so essentially all the different events that happens um using the system right um, and then all, all of it all of the rest is really just helper scripts that i've been making just to help uh, a little bit around the place to just do the setup like the browse view and so on but you can make these yourself and you can make them better modify them you can go in and look at them and see if you think that you know something needs to be changed and whatnot so for example, here you can see the browse view. It's just a very simple script that just every five seconds searches for new lobbies using the lobby manager search lobbies. And yeah, it's really as easy as that. Also, let's just quickly look at how the provider setup works. So in order to make your own provider, let's say that you wanted to, you know, use a custom database setup, you want to use Unity lobbies or whatnot, you can go ahead and just make your own provider. And please do, if you make a provider that works well for you, please do share it with us and we'd love to share it online as well. I'm just going to make a new script here and I'm just going to make it test provider just to show you exactly what it is that you need to do. So I'm just going to keep it mono behavior. That's pretty important because it do need it does need to be in the scene. And then you want to inherit from the I lobby provider, which is in the Perl lobby namespace. And now you can see it's red here. If we go and we just auto fill it out, I can implement the missing members and I can hit OK. You can see now here we have a bunch of things that all need to be handled. And you can, of course, go look in the uh, Steam lobby provider in order to see how I handle it in here. But essentially, uh, you just need to, with your functionality, whatever the provider is, to be handling, um, well, pretty much everything of these. And of course, if they don't have functionality, that's fine. Then you just don't use it on the other end. But you know, things like what happens when you shut it down, what happens when you initialize it, what happens when you're trying to pull friends, and so on and so forth. Um, and yeah, so it should be pretty straightforward. And as long as you just implement about these 70 lines of code, uh, it should work with pretty much any provider, whether that's your own database, Unity lobbies, and so on and so on. So I really hope this makes sense for those of you that want to make your own providers. Now I can also just show you how you then implement it. It's pretty easy. You can see the Steam lobby provider is here. And you can see if I just take the test provider and just put it in, in the scene here as well, and we go on the list, you can now see now we have the test provider as an option too. Obviously, it's going to be pretty angry with us because it's not implemented. 
Uh, so it's just going to say the method or operation is not implemented every time that it tries to call some functionality. Um, but, you know, you can see how easy it is to really get started with. You just make the script, inherit from my lobby provider, and you essentially just start filling out the functionality for these. Like what's going to happen when we leave the lobby, what's going to happen when the, and so on and so forth. And it should work with my scene setup here too. But bear in mind, you can make your own scene, you can customize this scene, and so on and so forth. Now, the next thing is also how I'm handling the UI. The UI is pretty simple and everything should be scalable and working properly like that. Um, but I essentially just use a view manager and views. This should hopefully be fairly easy to understand. I do something similar in my FPS tutorial. So you can see there's essentially just a view manager that has a bunch of views and making a view is very easy. You can actually see like the main screen here is now a view, has a canvas group uh, and that's about it. And you can see this is the whole script. It's just a main menu view that holds a view. Now, some views, of course, can have some functionality, like the browse view is a good example of something that holds some functionality. You can see it is a view and then on show it wants to do something on hide, it wants to do something else. And then it handles some stuff and update as well. But you can see how the views are essentially handled here. So the alpha is now zero on the browse screen, but on the main screen it's one and that's interactable. And I can see if I click the browse screen, then it'll go for alpha one here and it'll be interactable and block rate casts. Um, so it's a pretty pretty simple setup, should be easy for you to set up your own UI views if you want to modify that and so on. But hopefully this acts as a good example setup for you and something that you can utilize in your games and easily pull in and again, maybe even make your own providers. I'd love to see some of the providers that you make and we'd love to include them in Pernet and give credit where credit is due, of course, so that people can use uh, their own providers and so on. So yeah, I really hope that this was helpful to you. I hope you enjoyed the video, learned something new, and I really hope this tool will be useful for you. Please do remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps a small YouTuber like me a lot. And other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.